This camera here, this small point and shoot, is a Olympus Mu 400, a 4 megapixel camera from the year 2003. And well, it's not supposed to look like this. There should be a sliding cover in front, just like on the 35mm Olympus Mu cameras. So I guess at some point this camera has been dropped and the cover has been damaged and fallen off or something like that. Well, I don't know because I found this camera in the trash while dumpster diving for different electronics. So it was quite a lucky find. I very rarely find any like old cameras when dumpster diving for electronics. There was also the charger and the battery for the camera, but unfortunately the battery was dead, as can be quite common with old Digicams. Fortunately, I also have an Olympus Mu 500 that used the same battery, so it was just to take the battery and try it, and fortunately it works. Now, you don't have the sliding cover to turn the camera on, but you can just flick the switch in front and it works just like it should. Now, you don't have the protective cover, but this camera is fully usable. To my surprise, there was actually the memory card still in it, and uh, the Olympus cameras from this time use XD cards, so they're not so common to find anymore, or, I mean, not so easy to find the, like, real ones. And yeah, this one has had a 128 megabyte one, so it's not, not too bad find, I would say. Always useful to have them and trying out Olympus cameras and Fuji cameras. And oh yeah, the card was full of photos, completely full. So yeah, I was quite surprised that they hadn't at least tried to check the card before throwing away the camera. All of the photos were dated from December 2002, but that is like the default date of the camera. I mean, when you open the camera, it prompts for the time if it has not been set but you just like press like continue and it skips it so it's like easy thing to forget to do. I looked through the photos but unfortunately there was like no specific time or place that you could identify where they were taken or when they were taken. So yeah it could be like in Finland sometime during the last 20 years basically. And as expected the photos were just like someone's family photos nothing like uh, super special, nothing from like inside a nuclear reactor or something. So let's get back on track with the actual camera. And well, this is the second uh, camera in the Olympus Digital Mu series. The first one was the Mu 300, I guess the year before. Based on the reviews from 2003, this camera was liked by the reviewers and also it sold a lot, so it was a popular camera. So it seems that uh, Olympus was quite successful when transitioning from uh, 35mm to digital for the point and shoots. The design principles are quite similar between the two cameras. Uh, for example, well, <laughs> the sliding cover which is missing apparently, but also these uh, weather sealed bodies, like uh, you're supposed to be able to use these cameras in the rain. So they have rubber seals in all the like battery compartments and everything. Of course, uh, since it's missing the cover, it might not be so <laughs> weather seal anymore. And then, well, the user interface is uh, very similar between the two cameras. You can just turn them on and take a picture just like, just like that. You don't have to like uh, think about any settings or anything. There is one thing I don't like about the 35 millimeter version that they have carried on to the digital one. And that is that the flash is always set to auto when opening the camera. Of course, it is a point and shoot camera. You should always be able to take like a photo directly when you open the camera, no matter the light condition. So that's why the flash is set to fire more often than it would actually need to. But on later Olympus um, Digicams, they have it so that it saves your flash selection. So if you put it to off, it also, I mean, saves the settings for next time you open the camera. Well, actually, it is a small thing to complain about because the low light performance is not that good anyway on this camera. So I mostly use it in like very bright conditions. When I tested the camera, I went to a quite uh, interesting location, a winter garden, botanical gardens. Actually, I did not go specifically there to test the camera. I just happened to have it with me when I went there. So I thought this could be a quite nice location to test out the camera, to give it a fair chance uh, to show what it can do. I had really no idea what to expect from the camera, but I tried to put some effort into the shots to actually find some nice or interesting compositions and colors and light. So I could give it a yeah fair chance to show what it can do. When I came home and checked them in the computer, they actually turned out quite nicely, a few of them. So I'm quite positively surprised by this camera. The colors are quite nice uh, and also the white balance and exposure are quite solid as well. I didn't have any weird white balances. There are some like small settings you can do some changes like on the picture profile and so on. 
but I just use it in the default auto functions and yeah and it was working quite well from that just. Uh, overall I have to say that this camera really exceeded my expectations but of course I went in with no expectations after all I found it in the trash so I didn't even know if it would work properly yeah but it seems to be doing its job still after 20 years and yeah Olympus did quite a good job designing this point and shoot. You can still get some nice photos with it if you put in some effort I suppose. The resolution is of course very low I mean you don't have any like room to zoom in so much but that is to be expected it's even written uh, 4 megapixels on the front of the camera so you cannot like take it by mistake and expect some high resolution pictures so you have to work with the resolution you have on it. So this is all for this video thanks for watching and see you next time bye!